everyone and welcome back to Deersley. I finished part one awaiting for the white metal cast buffers to replace the kit ones. When they arrived however I found they looked a little small compared with the reference photos so I decided to opt to use the kit buffers after all. This made the buffers on the jib runner wagon look too small compared with the photos. So I have cut some discs and glued them to the original buffers uh, to make them look more like uh, their appearance in the reference photos. Now I'm going to turn my attention to the jib runner or jib carrier that I'm going to convert from this uh, mainline um, bogey bolster wagon. I think I said in part one that it was an airfix, uh, but in fact it is a main line. I've thrown away the little uh, uprights, um, but there are these uh, structures across here that need to be got rid of. The um, jib runners were quite smooth across, so I, I need to get rid of that. Um, I've taken off the, um, the couplings and the bogies just snap off. They just pull off and actually you can probably see the bottom part of this also comes apart. I'll look at that in a moment. Um, these are plastic wheels so I'm going to uh, replace these with some metal ones. So I'll put these on one side for the moment and turn my attention to uh, just taking this um, uh, bottom piece away from the platform. Um, I don't want to risk damaging this so I'll try and remove okay so look at this end that one's actually off so they look as though they just they just snap off actually but I don't want to break them this end ah that's it I mean it's good that they are a tight fit but that's got that removed without breaking it. Ah, and the very useful bit of um, metal to act as a weight. So again I'll put that aside with the, the bogus and have a look at this bit now which is actually all in one piece so I've got to be careful not to to damage these little bits. Um, now I'm going to work out a way to cut these off. I've actually started to cut them off with a knife but I was rather hoping um, I could get away without hacking them. Right, after a bit of trial and error I've gone for brute force and I'm, I'm going to cut them uh, roughly with the Dremel first to remove most of the plastic. Right, I've removed two of the um, the bolsters here um, and uh, I'll show you how, I, I'll, I'll do one uh, to show you how I've been doing it. It's a combination of the Dremel, a pair of pliers, uh, some sprue cutters and a knife and I will need to finish it off with some sanding paper. So firstly I cut out, I hack out quite crudely the, uh, uh, the bolster uh, being very careful not to uh, get the cutter anywhere near these sides. Okay. Right, the work of the Dremel is now finished. Um, obviously the plastic has, has melted to an extent but that's not going to be any problem. But it's still held in place there so with the pliers I'm just going to wriggle it free. And pull it out which leaves this rather untidy 
uh, hole which now needs cleaning up. Now I've left the ends of the bolsters against the um, side rails so that I don't damage the rails. So first of all I'm going to cut these uh, using the sprue cutters. I'm going to put the back ends of the cutters against the rail and cut down and the same on this side just cut down there and then I'm going to cut up to the rail and that, that flew out actually but that snipped out that final bit of the bolster there it is which has left it a little untidy but it's left the side uh, the sides of the wagon um, undamaged which is the main thing so now I can just finish this off with the knife I can tidy up that end and I can cut off some of this um, plastic that's melted okay it needs some trimming. It doesn't matter if I damage this because I'm going to put another floor on this. I just want all the frames and everything to to hold the shape so that it um, is still a sturdy uh, structure. Again it will need uh, tidying up under here. I will need, in order to get the bottom bit flat back again, I will need to trim up some of this molten plastic. Okay, we're finally done. The bit that matters is very neat. The surfaces are smooth, top and bottom, and we should now be able to snap back um, the section of the chassis that holds the weight and the bogus. So I'll just fit that in there, and then I should be able to just snap that back in position. That's it. For the replacement uh, uh, bed of the wagon, I'm going to cut this from 30 thou uh, plastic card. Uh, before I cut it though, I'm going to uh, scribe some uh, new planking using my uh, uh, Ulfa uh, cutter. And it's about two and a half millimeters apart, the planking. So I need to spend a little time, one, cutting a series of these. I'll do it before I cut the the wagon bed out because it's easier to hold a bigger sheet of plastic stable. So I'll score it first and then cut it afterwards. Okay, with the new wagon bed um, measured and cut to fit, um, I can place this inside the wagon frames. It's a nice snug fit. It sits nice and flat, so that's ready to be um, glued into position. I've put the wheels back on, so you can see now the complete modification of the um, the bed of this bogey bolster wagon. It's time now to add some of the smaller scratch built detailing that I can see um, along the uh, chassis of the crane. Basically these consist of sort of like uh, angled brackets above the centre of each of the axle boxes and a number of steps, one at the front and one at the back and one going up just underneath the, um, the cab door. For this I'm using a 0.5 millimeter plastic card that I shall cut into thin strips and this channel section plus struct I think it's called, I'm not quite sure, but you can buy various ch channel sections and L shapes and girder sections. This is a, um, a channel section and I've already cut five sections of that to fit above the axle boxes. 
So to make the steps, I'm simply going to cut thin, a series of thin strips of this, enough to cut up and make all the, all the steps. That should be, that should be plenty for one side. Once these are cut up, I will simply use some tweezers and dip them in some uh, polystyrene cement and just carefully glue them in place. The conversion of the crane chassis is now fully complete. I fabricated some vacuum hoses uh, using a stiff wire and some heat shrink tubing. I mentioned in part two that I wasn't sure whether I was going to have the, um, the crane working or not and I ran into a little bit of a problem. Um, my assembly wasn't that brilliant. I managed to get the glue um, between the drum and the bearings and everything and it seized up. So I was going to have it uh, not working until coming to the uh, problem of replacing the wheels here. Uh, I went to a local show and uh, found out that it was £2.80 per axle uh, to replace these wheels with metal ones, um, which worked out at about £12. But what I decided to do was to buy another crane kit because in this kit you get four axles that will suit the uh, jib runner and this kit including uh, postage from eBay was under £8.50. So it left me with a completely uh, uh, new crane that I could assemble and repair the uh, problem I made for myself in the first attempt. This is the first fiddly part of the build. The smaller drum uh, is in two parts and it must fit into that bearing there and into the hole in the side. Now I didn't pay enough attention to this on the first build uh, but this side obviously must be at 90 degrees to the base. Uh, this must fit vertically in its slot and leave this to rotate sorry, <laughs> to rotate freely. If I put a, a screwdriver in there, I can turn that and the drum rotates fine. I had to do a, a considerable amount of sanding to get this to fit and I found the best place to stand is this junction here, okay? Sand between the two drums to get these uh, to fit closer together. I haven't glued this, uh, this is all dry fitted. I've dry fitted also the front drum and again it needed a considerable amount of material removed from each half of this drum in this position. Again this is dry fitted, fitted. this is vertical to the uh, base and so is that and this needs to rotate sort of freely between the two. Both drums have now been glued together and I've brush painted them with some uh, Vallejo dark grey. Um, and I have fixed the nylon uh, cord or the nylon thread I'm going to use um, as, as the crane rigging. I've got a bit of super glue that's dried on here so I'll just trim that up. And then the the nylon thread can be wound on that and it can be stored. It's now time to scratch build a couple of the structures on the crane and on the uh, jib runner. And these are these, um, I guess they're toolboxes you can see here on the jib runner. They're positioned centrally uh, on the uh, wagon. And over here there's a couple of boxes that we need to fit onto the back of the crane. I think they're hydraulic boxes. There's actually a little, a little dial um, on them. 
uh, you can see quite clearly in this reference photo the box is, there's one either side, so there's two of them, uh, on the crane and the references I have for the jib runner shows um, the boxes here, there's some handrails and details on them, uh, but uh, you can see as well there are uh, one on each side. I'm going to assemble all these boxes from a half a millimeter uh, thick plastic sheet. I've measured the main ones for the jib runner uh, to uh, one centimeter deep. Um, I'm going really by eye um, uh, um, for the proportions of these based on the photographs and the plans. But a rough interpretation of the plan measurements makes them scale between 8 and 8 uh, millimetres to 1 centimetre. So I'll start with a strip and I know that the overall length of this for my um, bogey bolster wagon needs to be 7 centimetres. So I'll measure that and cut that across. I need to make four strips of this to make um, the boxes for each side of the bolster wagon. I have cut the basic shapes for the uh, sides and ends. You'll notice from this reference photo that the uh, tops or the lids of these boxes slopes so the front uh, edge is uh, not so high as the back edge. So I cut them all to uh, one centimetre but the fronts I've shaved off two millimetres so I've got the back and the front here of each box is cut. Uh, this is one side of the wagon that's the other and I've cut the ends of the boxes with the slope. So I'm going to now assemble these. I've assembled the box sections. I did say earlier actually that I made them from half um, a millimeter sheet. Uh, they're in fact made from one millimeter thick sheet. Half would be too flimsy. My apologies. Anyway, uh, they are assembled and the center section I've blocked off with a flat, not a sloped, but a flat piece of uh, one millimeter plastic card. Uh, this will need, once this is perfectly dry, you need to cut down the back part of this and level it off. I've done it on the other boxes so that you can see, this is, these are the boxes on the other side and you can see, I hope, uh, when these are cut and filed down, it leaves a flat area here, which supports the um, the jib uh, roller, and um, it's flat across the back there. Handrails can easily be made from uh, staples that can be reshaped and then heated so that they melt and push through the plastic. Then, using my uh, flat uh, pliers. I just straighten one leg like that. That can then be heated on a candle flame. Um, some pencil marks where the holes are going to be on the end there. The heated staple can simply be pushed through it. I then bend the staple to the length to make the, uh, the staple shape again and then heat it and push it through so that the staple is fixed in place. This can be uh, secured with some uh, super glue on the inside. 
I use a scrap of one millimetre plastic to act as a spacer so that all the handles are the same distance, are raised to the same distance. And then that simply holds in place till it dries. With the box assemblies now done and the handles fitted, um, I'm going to just true them up on the top and the bottom before I fit them to the uh, wagon. And for this I use a, a block of wood, um, a sturdy block of wood with a piece of uh, sort of fine sandpaper attached to it. And I can simply take the complete dried structure and just smooth the uh, base to make sure everything is flat. And also on the angle of the slope of the top, just true everything up. Now I'll fit them to the, uh, to the wagon. Again using photo references, <clears throat> I made some final detail parts again by cutting up uh, various bits of uh, uh, one millimeter uh, plastic card. These are the tops of the boxes and some detailing on the side and this these parts here will make up the the roller that supports the uh, crane jig. These again are from card. Um, this is just made up from bits from my uh, spares box. A bit of suitable sized plastic tubing and a couple of discs. I can't remember where they're from but they're about the same size so they make convincing ends for that. Now I'm able to add a little bit, that's the back of these particular boxes here and there's some rivet detail shown on the photographs. So I've added the rivet detail to these pieces here before I've put them on the wagon. And you can buy A4 sheets of double uh, O gauge rivet detail. But on this sheet there are various sizes and spacings of uh, rivets and you just cut them in strips and glue them on. And that's what I've done here. If you are ever going to uh, do anything like replacing wheels, as I'm going to do, a couple of tools are quite useful. I got them uh, uh, both from uh, mainly trains. And this is a, a double O gauge track gauge. And you simply check the diameters of your uh, wheels, uh, your replacement wheels, not the diameters, you, you check the spacing between your new wheels to make sure they're the correct gauge. So that's quite useful. And the other is a pair of reaming tools. Um, this is for opening up the old axle boxes to fix new axles. It helps make the new wheels, make sure the new wheels rotate freely. In the axle position like that and then by squeezing it and turning it it ensures the new wheels will turn freely. The new metal wheels from the second crane kit in this case can be inverted and they spin perfectly, perfectly freely. The jib runner uh, truck is now uh, fully complete. The roller is mounted on the top here, the jib will rest on that. So that's the assembly uh, part of this uh, build done. All that remains to do now is the painting and weathering and this will form part three, the final part. So that's it for part two. I hope you found this build uh, interesting and enjoyable and thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.